difficult because the high court judges have been bribed with the, the stolen farms, with SUVs, with Mercedes Benzes, and they, they, they basically get whatever they want from Robert Mugabe in exchange, obviously, uh, for certain kinds of judgments. Uh, but uh, my attitude is one of uh, doing it, even if I know I'm going to fail, for purposes of ensuring that, firstly, there's publicity. Uh, secondly, there's record keeping. And uh, thirdly, the judges themselves cannot say that, well, I mean, we couldn't do anything because no lawyer brought this case around. And also the politicians are obliged to respond to every application you bring or every process that you place before the court. Uh, if it's against the Minister of State Security, he has to file a response. And so he cannot turn around at some stage and say, well, these were just rogue security officers or rogue uh, uh, police uh, uh, on a frolic of their own. He, he will know that this is happening uh, because he has had to file something in response to what he said. So hopefully at some stage in the future, if anybody must account, uh, my hope is that uh, some of those records and the affidavits that they file will actually, uh, you know, help uh, nail them. I'll give you an example of a woman who was uh, abducted and tortured over a three-week period in 2009. No, 2008, late 2008. And when she, when we went to court to say, because the people who took her claimed to be police, so we immediately challenged that in court and we said, can the police say, you know, produce her in court and we see where she is. And obviously we knew the police were going to say, it wasn't us, we don't know who it is. In fact, we're treating this as a criminal abduction and we are searching for her as well because a report of a missing person has been made. And I said to the judge, great. So if the police, uh, you know, are treating it as a criminal uh, abduction, we're quite happy to work with them. With, um, with the police to try and locate it because you know we have more experience in knowing where the secret police take uh, people that are abducted, etc. And every 24 hours we have to file something with you, judge, saying what we have done. Uh, suddenly the police were not very keen to, to, to do that, and they were like, "No, no, 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 no! You'll be interfering with police investigation." He said, "No, we'll be assisting," you know, and then. Anyway, the long and short of the story is that when she was ultimately found, and uh, she was alive, thankfully, and uh, they then said she was uh, being prosecuted for treason and trying to topple the government, etc. Uh, uh, we did a constitutional challenge where we said, well, I mean, before you even go to what you allege she did, We've got to deal with her abductors and her torturers. Who are they? The police must know who they are because they would have received her from somebody. And we want those answers. Who were the abductors? And the state security minister incredibly filed an affidavit where he said it would not be in the best interest of the country's security to disclose who these are. So clearly, the abduction was done with his full knowledge by persons he knows, and he fully approved of it. And for me, if I had not taken that case to court, I would never would have received on oath direct confirmation from the state security minister that he knew who the abductors were, and he necessarily knew, knows who tortured this woman. So are you finding when you walk into court these days, based on these experiences, that the prosecutors tend to work with you, give you a break, try to resolve matters? Not the prosecutors, because they are not allowed to. Okay. They'll tell you straight that we don't believe in it, but we are not allowed to. Uh, the police, from time to time, have found ways of sort of giving information to me. Sometimes I don't even know who is who has given the information. Sometimes a, a brown envelope is dropped at my office and it, it has some incredible information and you know that not everybody working within the system is 
uh, happy with what's going on, they know what's right, they know what's wrong. Uh, and even just the way this woman was found out, because the way she was found out, we managed to put an advert in one of the papers. And it was people within the army camp where she was being held who were able to anonymously give us information of where she actually was. So, you know, it helps to be known because you get help. It's not direct help because it's, it's too dangerous for everybody. But, uh, you know, they find ways of, of sending you the information. You know, in a, in a society where, as Peter explained, there are presumably thousands of children and men and women walking around as human billboards because of these torture factories. Um, we've seen so much commentary on the effect of social media um, in the Arab world. Has social media impacted Zimbabwe? I mean, the, the problem is in Zimbabwe is that you know, very, very, there's very few people have access to, to email. Very few people. I mean, very, <coughs> very few people can even afford newspapers. I mean, there, there are some, there are now some opposition newspapers, and and. You know, the, the situation that I was describing there was at its height in 2008. I mean, since then it's become very complicated and that the opposition have been sort of forced into a kind of, in my view, bogus hybrid government, um, um, at, at mostly at the behest of the South Africans. And, and so there's a sort of weird situation where M Mugabe is still in power, but there's a, the, the, the opposition have some... Have it's a some, shared kind of relationship, right, but it's still Mugabe. Right, no, absolutely. When all said and done, Mugabe still has, has the hard power and is in charge of the police and the army and the, and, you know, the, and the, the security forces in general. Um, so, so, so it's... The real thing that matters in Zimbabwe, and before they can have a free and fair elections, what they're supposed to have is a complete opening up of the media. And that hasn't been honoured. And in particular, what's important is TV, but especially radio. For, 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 rural, for the rural people living out in the villages and, 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 and the countryside, what the, their media, the only media they really consume is, is radio, and especially FM radio. So there are some independent radio stations that brought in, broadcast into the country on shortwave. But the thing about shortwave is that it's easy to jam, and also the radios are very expensive. So for example, the Americans, as from out of the American embassy during that election period, brought in, they imported thousands and thousands of shortwave radios so people could hear. And what Mugabe, Mugabe's militia, when they found out and they went into people's houses and did searches, they always looked, whenever they found a shortwave radio, they stopped it, they, they broke it. So the only radio, FM radio you can get in Zimbabwe is ZBC, and it's absolutely toxic. I mean, the stuff that you hear on ZBC in the, the, in the English broadcasts are bad enough, but in the vernacular broadcasts, my goodness me, I mean, they are, they are almost, um, they, they're getting to the, 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 they're getting to sound like radio into Hamway, the radio, the station in Rwanda that used to broadcast kind of invective and, and was so toxic, it's, it's like that. So at the moment, there's really no, there's, there's, there isn't meaningful um, media freedom in that sense. What, what about the, I guess, the, the spirit of the people? Um, and again, I compare it to us. Um, we draw from a culture of freedom. We know that as individuals, if government interferes with certain basic rights, our constitution provides a vehicle and we're uh, socially conditioned. We know how to fight back. But even if there were a change in regimes, what about the people themselves and their social Well, your conditioning is that you can fight, you can stand up and say what you are entitled to, and there'll be no consequence. The checks and balances are there, you, you know, and right. everybody respects right. that. Uh, we don't have those rules anymore in Zimbabwe. Uh, people are more concerned with basic bread and butter issues. Survival. Where will my next meal come from? A country that has over 80% unemployment. What, what percentage? Eight zero. Eight zero, yes. And, uh, you know, when Peter spoke, you heard that we've had uh, uh, hyperinflation that has never been heard of in the entire world. We had the 
a trillion dollar note that couldn't buy you anything. Like you and, 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 and so really people's attitudes are, you know, I'm going to look at what will get my family to survive for today. If I stand up and talk, I'll be dead or my, my bones will be broken. You'll be one of the t statistics that Peter is talking about. And uh, also Zimbabwe had a very, very high literacy rate. People there are very, very well educated. So, you know, that also tends to make them analyze things before they happen. If I stand up and do this, do I want to be broken limbs in a hospital? No, I don't. Uh, so, you know, what purpose will it serve anyway? Because it's not going to change anything. I can't go to court to sue these guys because the judges are not going to give me anything. Uh, so at a practical level, what will I achieve? So the majority of people will quietly say to you, yeah, this is horrible, and it's good you're fighting it, but hey, I would, I'd never do it, yeah. And, and most of them will come to you and ask you, are you crazy or something? Why do you do this? Uh, because for them it's like, you know, if you are okay in your little corner, just let well, things if be. A judge, if a judge, for example, doesn't rule the way the administration wants it to, what does the judge lose? I mean, is there an impact? Yes, you can lose your farm. We've had some judges that... You lose your land. Yes, yes. You, we had one judge, for instance, uh, about maybe two years ago, when he ruled in favor of one of the opposition members who had been arrested, uh, suddenly uh, the first lady was interested uh, in his uh, land. He had a very well-run farm, which he had been given by the government, and uh, it was taken from him. So, I mean, that's, that's real. We've had